Hi there, I'm Tom Strezik, and this is my shop. Welcome to my second weekly shop update. It's about uh, seven degrees here, a little chilly in the shop. Thank you to all of my zero subscribers. I appreciate every last one of you, especially you, you're most important. I like you a lot, I like the cut of your jib. So let's get on to cool stuff. Cool stuff today. Uh, last week it was uh, stuff that I found on the internet that I wanted to share with you. Got that out of the way. Uh, what I want to talk to you to about today is how a tree is put together. I got this wonderful piece of log right here with this little section right here. This section here is something called the pith of the tree. When a tree grows, it's sapling, oh yeah, big around. The, the, the meat of the wood comes from the center of the tree. The, that means the outermost rings are the ones that are the, the oldest, and the innermost rings are the newest rings. Once a tree hits adolescence, something develops inside of the bark called the cambium layer. The cambium layer not only produces bark on the outside, but that's what produces the wood on the inside. And it starts producing the late and early growth rings that you typically see when you cut a tree down. The, this eventually translates in lumber to the, the, the grain, you know, the, the black and white lines in the grain. So, but after a tree reaches maturity, the, depending on the, the species of the tree, this is different uh, depending. But once it reaches maturity, the innermost center of the tree, not, the, not this part, but anything that isn't sapwood. What sapwood is created by the cambium layer. The cambium layer creates sapwood and that transmits all of the water and the nutrients up and down the tree. Once a tree gets to a certain age, the interior part of the sapwood actually hardens and mostly dies. It gets a lot of things, uh, tannins uh, grow inside of, the, inside of the cell structure of the, the cell walls. Um, it gets darker, it gets harder. The, the pores close, it no longer wicks moisture, well, as well as it did. Some, some uh, species of tree close their pores better than others. White oak and cedar close their pores almost completely, while things like red oak and pine will al still allow water to transmit through them. And this is why white oak and cedar tend to be the trees, or the lumber that we use to make outdoor furniture. And specifically, white oak was used to make the, the great ships of the, the 16th and 17th centuries. So, uh, that's over. The, once the interior part of the sapwood hardens and effectively dies, it becomes what's called heartwood. And the heartwood becomes the structure of the tree. But since there is no more moisture or... Uh, there's no more water or nutrients coming into the very center of the tree, the very pith, this, this part of the tree here. It dies, like entirely, and it rots away. Now, eventually this rot will spread throughout the entire core of the tree, and the tree will end up hollow and then simply fall over and die. After, a, a, this is, uh, depending on the species, uh, after pop, poplar, it's something like 100 years. Hickory, it's something like 250. And... The giant, you know, sequoia trees is, you know, hundreds if not thousands of years, depending on the tree. So, uh, trees have different lifespans. They don't live forever. They do eventually die. And depending on the species of the tree, it dies sooner or later. But, when we are working as woodworkers with something called quarter sawn material, this is the material that is sawn directly to either side of the pith. It is very stable material. It doesn't really expand or shrink along its width. It does very little along its thickness. But you can't use the pith because it's all rotted. The only way you can successfully use quarter sawn wood and have a wide board is to saw the pith out and then glue the two boards back together. If you have any more questions regarding uh, tree growth, structure, 
the pith itself, heartwood, sapwood, cambium layer, the whole nine yards. I've done a fairly decent study of it, and you can email me any questions that you have. You can also message me on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash Workshop, and I'll, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. All right, let's move on to the tool of the week. Tool of the week this week is a plow plane. This is a wooden bodied Hong Kong style plow plane by the Mujing Fang Tool Company. The most Asian planes operate on a pull stroke. You see a lot of people, including myself, use planes on a push stroke. But the most of the Japanese style or Asian style of tools is designed to operate on the pull. Uh, for the saws, it means the teeth are filed in such a way that you want to pull. And in the planes, I honestly don't know what the design difference is, but I'll tell you what, boy, howdy, they operate so much better on the pole. There are a lot of different styles of plow plane. Uh, Stanley made a plow plane. There are quite a few wooden-bodied Western-style plow planes. I have this one because it costs $35, $40. It's a fairly cheap plane. Most plow planes will run you in excess of three or $400 for a new one. Or a junk used one will run you about a hundred bucks if it's got all of its parts. A plow plane does it, it does exactly kind of what the name describes. It plows a groove in wood. It does this, but with one of several sized cutting irons. I this pl this particular plane came with five irons. Got a one eighth. Uh, three, uh, three sixteenths, a quarter, three eighths, and half inch wide blades. And these will therefore cut those widths of grooves. Now, what would you use it for? Well, what good does just a groove do? Well, you, it's usually used in casework and drawers to put in things like drawer bottoms or frame and panels, uh, doing a, a coping of your own, just coping and sticking of your own frame and panel joints. Uh, they're very useful tools. You could use it as a kerfing plane, but we'll get to that later. The parts of a uh, of any plow plane are pretty basic. Uh, this this wedge is part of almost any wooden plane. Otherwise, you have a uh, a cap iron and a lever cap that holds the the iron and and whatnot in place. But there are always rods upon which a fence can ride. You tighten down the fence. To the distance between the, the the distance between the fence and the edge of the blade is where it is the distance that you want from the bottom of your drawer or whatever to the the groove to accept the drawer bottom. This part here is called the skate. This allows the the blade to protrude through the bottom down to the depth that you want while still let's turn around the right way while still supporting the iron from the back. And this is to simply keep it balance, but you want the iron supported so it doesn't do, doesn't have any chatter. Uh, this particular plane is made out of rosewood. Uh, once again, a lot of steel bodied planes are made. Um, beech wood, boxwood, hard maple, sometimes hickory, uh, hardwoods generally. You wax the bottom of a sole to keep it nice and slick. You tighten the, uh, the fence down and you go to work. What's on the bench? Well, continuing work on the uh, Arch and Crafts inspired chest of drawers. I've got, I, I had to start out, I, I have some oak planks from a log that I had sawn up for me this summer. It's down to about 11% moisture content, which is about as good as it's going to get around here. I've tested some of my other boards that I've had for years, and unless they're rotten on the inside, they have anywhere from uh, nine to eleven percent moisture content. The the shrinkage from when it goes into a place where it may be lower humidity, because I'm in a basement, a little higher humidity here, isn't really going to be an issue because the whole case is going to shrink uh, in the same manner. Also, almost every piece of this case is made out of quarter sawn white oak. This was completely accidental. In fact, the white oak itself was accidental. I thought I was planing down uh, my stock of red oak. 
I don't know what I had planned for my white oak, but apparently it planned to be part of an arts and crafts inspired chest of drawers. So the the boards were too wide, usually about 16 inches or so, and my uh, bench top planer is only a 12 and a half inch wide planer. So I had to break a lot of the material down. I had to go to the lumber yard, pick up some maple. I don't have any maple on hand that isn't spalted, and it turns out that my wife is possibly allergic to spalted maple. So I went to the lumber yard, I picked up some soft maple, ambrosia maple. It's good, it's white, it's cheap. I paid two and a quarter a board foot. It's real cheap, and it's decent quality wood. So I ran that through the planer. I was able to run those mostly whole, but I had to cut down my white oak boards. And because I had really no control over how the tree grew, and I don't, I'm not exactly a forester, I can't walk around looking for nice tall straight trunks with no branches on them for a long time, the quarter sawn stock was next best thing to number two common. There were a lot of knots, a lot of rot, a lot of uh, wild curly green uh, from where where branches had grown out. It was not fun to plane. Uh, thank God I don't have to do a lot of hand planing with this just to smooth up the parts, but I selected parts that had as few wild curly green, as, li as little wild and curly green as possible. So I had to break it down with my circular saw because I don't trust a six foot long, 17 inch wide, inch and a half thick-ish board that ends up being, it's about 65 or so pounds a cubic foot. It's about a cubic foot and a half. I, I'm not doing that with my table saw. I don't have an outfeed table or anything like that to support it on the way out. So I laid it down on the top of the bench. I laid out what I needed cut out. I mean, it's quarter saw material. I had to cut out the pith. Um, the Once that was cut out, then I was able to cross cut and get rid of some of the, the the crotch grain and the the crazy grain from branches and such. That's all firewood. That's all my firewood stack now. And then run that all through my bench planer. And then once that was done, I planed it down to three quarters of an inch because all my joinery is drawn out, the, the based on three quarters of an inch, so that I could just simply set my plow plane to a quarter of an inch between the fence and the iron to have an exactly exactly one quarter inch from the edge because quite a bit of this is frame and panel. I really enjoy having my panels be in the right place. I like it when my grooves all line up. A lot of this is going to be mortise and tenon joinery so I had to plan for the longer boards so that I could cut the cut the tenons. Uh, after I got them to thickness I ran them along the jointer my power jointer to clean up one edge, took it over to the table saw, cut it, cut all the pieces to rough width, came back, cut all the pieces to final width, went to the miter saw, cut them, I, I cut them all, you know, one side and then cut the, uh, cut them to, to final length. And if you can see it, that's the stack over there. It's all inch and a half uh, and three inch wide pieces. Now I have to concentrate on the legs. I'm going to have to do a fairly serious glue up for that. I don't have enough stock left over to make full 40, 44 and a half inch long, three to four inch wide, inch and a half thick legs. That's quite a bit of long, wide stock. So it's going to be uh, quite a bit of lamination. Uh, it's going to receive either a, a, a real slow, gradual curve up or simply going to taper up to a certain point and then it's only going to be an inch and a half wide and it's the top of them are going to be square. Then I'm going to have to turn my attention to the breadboards. The breadboard, uh, the breadboard top, I'm going to have to plane down some more white oak for that because I certainly don't have enough material for that. So that's about it for today. I hope you have a good time. I hope to see you next week. Maybe I'll have more subscribers. I don't know. So this is Tom Strezik from the Strezik Workshop, and I'll leave you with this.